What would happen to all this math? What would that side be called? 3 minus 4 is negative 1. A times 3 minus 3 becomes a 0. Then you have a B times a 3 minus 2, which is a 1. We know what B is. Man, that was fast. What's B? Thank you, Walter. James Stewart, for giving us a nice integer. <coughs> By the way, that's why I wanted to start with a number that wasn't an integer. Sometimes you don't get integers. Right? Now, what's the other one? If x equals 2. All right, start over here. 2 minus 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Mm -hmm. Equals a. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Plus, what's that turn into? By the way, I wasn't taught this one. I was, I'm sure my teacher was like, she wanted to make sure I did everything so it worked every time. I didn't know this little quick thing. What's A here? Is A just 2? It's right. Is ready. Put these here. Replace that. It is right. All right. A over X minus 2. What's that? 2. Plus B over X minus 1. Ah, we don't need to use so. Try it out. We'll finish it up. You go, wait, there's numbers. Oh, we'll plug those numbers in. natural log of plus negative 1. Do you just want to put minus 1? Okay. Minus 1 times the natural log of x times 3. And now it's a definite integral. I will plug in the values of 0 and 1. I'll substitute 1. Subtraction sign. Make sure we also substitute the 0, right? Because you notice, if you put zeros in here, you still get numbers. Okay. It is now ready. 2 natural log x minus 2, absolute value. Minus 1 times natural log of x minus 3, the absolute value bars. I get 2 natural log of, what's 1 minus 2? It's a negative 1, but there's bars around it. What's the absolute value of 1? I mean, what's the absolute value of negative 1? Anybody know the natural log of 1? All right, cool. That's going to turn into 0. I'll leave it like that. This is just for your notes. But just so, at first, maybe I'll just plug all the numbers in. Now you got minus ln of, plug into 1, negative 2. Subtraction sign, and now you're going to plug into what? The zeros, right? So I'm going to plug in the zeros to natural log of, negative 2, minus, and I'm forgetting something on purpose, so keep the catch it. 0 minus 3 is what? Now, when I screwed up, it's a common error on test. I want to make sure no one makes it. So I'm just plugging in numbers, all right? Yeah, this subtraction sign has to distribute all this, right? Well, I just said plus on three. Okay, let's finish this up. 2 L and a 1, which is 0, minus natural log of 2, minus 2 natural log of 2. Still in the bar, so I'll write ln3. That's zero, right? Looks like we got it. But when I bet you back a book doesn't write it that way, do they? Aren't there um, law of properties you can write a little bit better? But that's pretty daggone good. Like, students always like, yeah, can I leave it like that? I'm like, yeah, but can you erase the zero? And I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll take that. That's exact. That's exact, right? But before we just leave it like this, let's talk about at least writing it in simplified form. Ln3 minus Ln2 minus 2x 
2 ln 2. Okay, can I start here? Anybody need to move that 2 there? Can we write this as ln 4? ln of 2 squared, which is ln of 4. I don't know if you knew that log problem. I know sometimes you get nervous, like, do I have to do that? It's okay, no. I'll be honest, I'm okay if you don't do that. Anybody know what you can do with that? It's a property of log. So you can already write this as one log. Natural law, you got to do a, is it multiplication or fraction? It's the fraction. So I can rewrite this whole problem as natural log of 3 over 2 minus natural log of 4. Can I go even further? <laughs> yes, you can. So right now I'm just manipulating. And this is fine when Natural log of, what's 3 halves over 4? 3 over 1. Great. But yes, so when I am me, I'm fine if you just left the water. Right here. Right. Sure, that's an exact answer. But properties logs. My concern was you look in the back of the book and you're like, what the heck did I do wrong? Where well, these are just equivalent. It's just by properties of logs and so on. You can check this with your calculator, but your calculator's not going to write it like this. It's going to put it in decimal form, because that's an irrational value. I that's, that's absolutely. I know. Hey, I get for years, right? Because it's, it's funny. Students, it's, they're more concerned before the test. They're more concerned about log properties than the actual Calc 2 stuff, right? I get a kick out of that. I'm like, all right. That's the exact answer. That's pretty cool. But you can. Hey, by the way, um, here we, we wrote it as natural log 3. What if this is a plus? What could you write it as? You can do natural log of. Three times two. It's just, there's only three log properties involved in it. Hey, can I raise? All right. This next scenario, everyone, just kind of stands alone. I'll let you look at it. Make sure we got enough for you. This problem I wanted I made up. <coughs> This is like number 23 in the textbook. We're going to find the integral of 20 over x minus 1, x squared plus 9. I think I got it from over here. We've got to find this. 20 over x minus 1 x squared plus 9. Most important part is the setup, right? Does everyone see it? The nonlinear factor there? Good eye. So it's just going to make the problem a bit longer than the last one, right? Who cares? So there will be a few more extra steps, right? We'll get it. We'll get it. Let me get this started. I just go off to the side. I start thinking, hey, I'll come back to you. I'm going to play with this fraction, this rational expression. We're going to play with it. All right, what's that equal to? A over, and what, just a B? <laughs> You're good, BX plus C. Over X squared plus non, there's a nonlinear factor. Let me rewrite this again. I mean, A times a common denominator. <coughs> Chalk here, x squared plus 9, x squared plus 9, plus bx plus c times common denominator, so I have to multiply it, x minus 1 and a x minus 1. What's all that equal to? At least I like the left side. That numerator only has a what? But there's that right side. It's like, okay. Our goal is just to find letters A and B and C. But look it over. All the denominators are the same. All the denominators are the same. Our focus is now the numerator. Okay. 
Here's our focus. Just this. I'll write it again. 20 equals A times x squared plus 9 plus bx plus c times the x minus 1. Okay. When in this problem, at some point, we will have to do this process of equating coefficients. But before we do that, can you examine it? You can still get one of the letters, A, B, or C, by doing the if thing. We just go if x equals, you can get one of the letters. You want me to try it over here? Maybe x equals 1. Does it work here? Well, if x equals 1, that becomes 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 times all this becomes 0. zero. We're going to get one of the letters, huh? Cool. I do want to point out there's no x value you can let equal here, huh? Not in the real number system. True? So that, but at least, let's get this thing started. I'm going to do it right now. Let's do the if statement right there. If, to me quick, if x equals 1, can we get one of the letters? Yeah, let's do it, because it's fast. 20 would equal a times a, what's 1 plus 9? 10. Plus, my favorite part, 0. What's that? x equals 1, 20 equals a times 10 plus 0. a is just a 2. But I want to get the b and a c. Let's do equal your coefficients. So you remember how to do this? That only has a 20 there. I have to distribute all that stuff in the numerator. We'll do it. 20 equals a x squared plus 9a plus. Uh oh, I got to foil that, huh? So when I'm now going to do the process of equating coefficients, I'm going to pull this all out. What's bx times x? bx squared minus bx. Almost done boiling. Tell me this other one. No a is two. Minus bx. Do the inners. Plus cx minus a what? Now, on the right side, get all your x squared together. I got ax squared plus bx squared. Get all your things with x's together. It looks like I got a cx minus a bx. And get all your things with constants. There's a plus a 9a and a minus a 1. And what's this equal to? 20. This is called equating coefficients. Can you get a solo x squared there and a solo x there? That's your goal. Can you get a solo x squared there? Who would it be? A plus B times x squared. Plus, parentheses, C minus B times an x. Oh, this is just a constant. Leave it as is, right? And this is all equal to a what? 20. Looking good. Can we do something to the left side if you don't mind? I don't see anything with an x over here, do you? In fact, I don't see anything with an x squared over here. So just I'm going to add this to the left side. Can I just write this? Did you all agree? Can I do 0 x squared over here plus 0 x plus that 20? Can I think of the left side like that? Can anyone see this? Can I think of it like that? just so I'm ready to equate coefficients. Isn't that what's on the left side? There's an x squared with a coefficient of 0. There's an x with a coefficient of 0, right? So now I can equate coefficients. What's this <coughs> a plus b going to have to be? 0. What's this c minus b going to have to be? 0. And what's the 9a minus c going to have to be? 20. All right, I'll write that up. a plus b must equal that. Zero. The C minus B must be equal to the zero. Hey, if you want to put like bars like this to help you see it, feel free to do that for your notes when you go back and look. You know, say two years from now, you're 
two years from now you're tutoring someone, you're going to be like, how did I do this? Maybe just those bars will help you see what we're doing with these coefficients. Those are equal. And what's this 20 equal to? 20 must equal to 9a minus c. Don't forget, we already found one of the letters. Do not forget that. We found a, it's what? So I'm going to start right here. Can we get c? I could. Or can I get b? Yeah, this is going to be easy now. Where do you want to start? Because we've got a. We've got a. We can definitely get b and c with all this stuff. Like, you can use matrices and stuff to solve this thing. Gaussian elimination, but this is going to be easy. We don't need that. We've got the A value. Uh, Want to start here? You're right. Start right there. C minus B equals to zero. Z minus B equals zero. Thank you. I'll write that. And when that C minus B must equal zero. Thank you, Art. <laughs> you want to start here? If A plus B equals zero and A equals two, what's B? B equals negative. If C minus B equals zero, C minus negative 2 equals 0. C plus 2 equals 0. Let's see. Do we have all the letters? Let's circle them all. Okay. And you want to check this because it should check out. Is it true? Would you check this? We didn't even have to touch this last one, but is it true? We should double check. Is 9 times that number minus that number equal to 20? We got it. All that work, but we got it. Look at it. I do all the right. I know some of you might do like two steps at once. So I come back. How do I write this thing? A over x minus 1. What's the A? 2 and 2. 2 over x minus 1. Plus? A over 2x plus or minus 2. B was a... Uh, Negative 2? <coughs> and then C was a minus 2? And what's down here? That's good for some. That's going to be easy. That's going to be a natural log, right? But I'm going to wait till everyone has that written down because everyone, we're going to have to do something about this left one. I mean the left one, the one on the right. Excuse me. This is going to be easy. That's just going to be 2 natural log x minus 1, true? When we perform and find the antiderivative. This we should split up that fraction. Okay. Now we're going to split up the fraction. It won't be too bad though. And when the hard part's over, the hard part's over. We found A, B, and C. We're going to break this thing that was complicated, this rational expression, into partial fractions. And we'll be able to do the other. Alright, but the first thing is. Let's write three of these separately. What would this be? Take it 2x over x squared plus 9 plus. Now i got to check with that one in the room. You okay if I erase this? On the right? Anybody need to step yourself on this now? We have video. Uh, any particular reason you can find the negative one? You can. You absolutely can. In fact, I'll do that. I'll put that negative 2 there. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, so you can put a negative 2 here, and then we'll put this over that. I want to give a race. All right. Can we get some room? I'm going to use your suggestion. You're saying put plus negative 2 integral of x over the x squared plus 9. And then again, what's the last part? Minus a 2 times the integral of a, what would this be? 1 over x squared plus 9. But I want to make sure everyone's okay with how I broke that into three fractions. All I did was split that fraction up, right? Well, we have to. We have to do that. We have to split it up so we can integrate it. Well, is it okay that people are recommending, hey, I like to put constants in front? You surely can. Negative 2x in front, but that x, I mean the negative 2 in front, but the x has to stay. And in this case, if you take the negative 2 in front of the integral symbol, but a constant of 1 would be up there. Now, believe it or not, everyone, I think people in this class have never seen this one before. So I'm going to start this. We'll talk about that. It's, it, it's actually introduced in this section. Who's ever seen the integral of x squared plus 1? 1 over x squared plus 1. Ah, 
John, what is that? Mark? Inverse, yep, inverse tangent. Did you know that? Then you know this, one over x squared plus one. Doesn't that look close to it? But this should look new to a lot of you. So we'll talk about that last. This one's easy, what's that? All right, this requires an old technique. We've only had three major ones so far. This is the third one. U subs, substitution rule. Integration of my parts, and now partial fractions. How do you think you can get that going? A U sub will work. A U sub is gonna work on the middle, we have to use a U sub. What would you let, remember with U subs, go for that power higher by one thing. What are you gonna let U equal? All right, so I'm for this second part right here. Maybe I can spread it out a little bit. So people over here, I'm just gonna spread this out, minus, what's this last part? Two integral, one over x squared plus nine, right? Just leave myself some room, you can do the same thing, so you can do your new sum. You know, unless you do it in your head. Some students do it in their head. I'm gonna let the u equal to the x squared plus nine. Oh, okay. What's du? 2x dx. Um, I gotta knock out the x dx. So I'm gonna divide the two on both sides. One half du must equal x dx. It's ready to substitute. The beauty is, everyone, we're gonna get this integral. This is way better than what we had originally. Long problem, though, huh? I know. Well, it's one of the crazy ones. We'll get it. We'll get it. Okay. I'm gonna put this back in. You got a minus two here. Is it okay if I put the half with the minus two? What's minus two times the half? Minus one. Ooh, minus one. X dx turns into a du. And you got a one over a two. So when that two, just so you know, that minus two times that half is what made this turn into one. Does everyone see that? If you want, you can write two times a half out here. I don't want to rush you on that. Sometimes you're like, hey, how did that turn into one? I took that negative two, so turn times that whole way. So what's this turn into? Minus natural log of u. Well, what was u? So we keep writing this. I keep writing this. I don't want to forget about that thing. Minus the natural log of x squared plus nine. Do I need bars? So I'm going to solve it. Yes, you can leave bars, but you'll notice the back of the book does that too. I want you to know why. Was that one okay with the u sub on the second part? Right. Now this one. Well, there's two ways you can look at it this way. The one way is there's a formula. All right, it's introduced in your textbook in this section. So if you're wondering, was this formula given back in top one? I don't recall it. No. It got introduced in this section because situations like this emerge in a section a lot. You go, oh, that is a rational expression, isn't it? But that one's easy. What was this? Arc tan of x. Well, what's another way to write that? Inverse tan plus c, right? How do you deal with situations like this? So I'm going to put a, it's just a nice little integral form. And it's for the expression the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared. The integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared, where a is a constant, becomes 1 over a inverse tangent x over a. Just from experience, I know students have no problem remembering this. But isn't that cool? Now, we can prove this if you want. It's not hard to prove that. You can prove it by a use of, to be honest. You're like, I'm going to prove that. That's not a hard proof. But everyone knows A's are constants. Those A's are constants. It should work here, too. Does it work here? But this is introduced in this section because it is a rational expression, but we're going to have to deal with that last scenario. Okay. If anybody wanted to see that proof, just let me know. Can you show me why that's happening? It's actually easy proof to use so. Just to, you know, show that that in terms of how to derive it. Okay, then, what's the A value here? A equals three. 
do the formula. So when everyone's recognizing here, I'll draw an error that like A is not 9, but A equals up 3, and I'm going to use this formula. It'll be minus 2 parentheses, and I just want to write what we just said. It would be 1 third arc tan. You like to write arc tan or tan negative 1. It's up to you in terms of notation, right? How did I write it over there? I put the tan with the negative 1 in the superscript. I'm going to write arc tan of x over 3. Because I want you to be familiar with both notations. O plus a constant, huh? Look at that answer. That's the entire derivative. Again, who uses Wolfram Alpha? I think it's great. Imagine. Try that tonight. If okay, you get a chance, just put it in there. Put in the Wolfram Alpha. Look at that antiderivative. See, you can't make this more. Well, you can multiply two times a third and get what? Two thirds. Two, natural log x minus one, minus natural log x squared plus nine, minus two thirds arctan x over 3 plus constant. Awesome. Noah? Could you condense it by using the log properties? You sure can. You can put that 2 up here. I love it. And then you could do what's a minus. You could do the numerator of the denominator. I think that's great. Feel free to do that. This is fine now. I know you asked me earlier, can we leave it like that? Absolutely. But you definitely could do that. He wanted to go further. He said, oh, I can move that up here. x minus 1, 3. And then he has a minus here. So no, very good. Want to care about all that? Hey, uh, look at this next scenario. It's unlike any of these problems when it's in a section because it's a rational expression. That's a rational expression, too. Check out this next one. Oh, go ahead. Oh, if you don't, it's okay. Do you agree there's no way in the real number system this could ever be negative? Any x value. That's why. I did it up because I know you, I'm sure you check solution manuals, the back of the book. You're going to notice I'm doing the same thing. I didn't want you to be at home going, why are they, is that a typo? So when they see that number, it's automatically positive or not. You can still do the part. All right. And when this is, this is like number seven. How do you deal with this? This should kind of startle us. Oh, rational expression. Maybe, maybe U sub. U sub's not going to work. Stare at it for a while. See, it's got the Martians. Of, it's got the markings of a partial fraction problem. You go, maybe U sub. Yeah, but when we did the U sub before, remember when we let U equal the thing in the denominator? Remember the denominator had that power higher by one? U sub's not going to work here. U sub's not going to work. That's not integration by parts, is it? Integration by parts is stuff like what? You know that stuff, right? This is not in, so this is partial fractions, isn't it? But our technique's not going to work on this thing, huh? Because all I see is one lonely what? Linear factor. So I'm going to bring up an old topic, everyone. I'll watch your faces. I don't know if you like this. It could be a while. I'm talking about like a pre calc course. Does anybody remember long division? Anybody remember long division? Now, if you've never seen it before, it's not hard. We're trying to break this into what? Partial fractions. The techniques we've learned so far isn't going to work, is it? Because we only have what? One solely linear effect. So we're just going to have to do long division. So what's long division? Over here. X minus 1. Put in X squared. It's not bad, though. This will be quicker than any of the other problems we've done today, I'll tell you that. I'm going to hide that minus 1. Can you all look at that x? x times what equals x squared? So I'll put in x. Does that one say I'm doing long division? Okay. x times what equals x squared? x. Now I need you to multiply this x times these two things. What's x times x minus 1? x squared minus x times negative 1. I need my back on the long division, so it's fifth grade. Now remember with long division, even if the last time we do it was fifth grade, we subtract down. We subtract down, okay? So what's x squared minus i squared? Good, it's gone. Here, they're gone. But there was a zero x here. 
There was a plus zero x. What's plus zero x? Be careful. Listen to this. Plus zero x subtract minus x. Everyone see that? Let me see because we subtract down, don't we? What is a? You can write a plus zero x here if you want. What is zero x subtract a minus x? Turns into a positive x. Y'all see that? Need to see it again, Noah? You bet. See, what's sitting right here? We're thinking, I'll put it in yellow. There's like a plus zero x there, isn't it? That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, okay. When I take this and I subtract this, zero minus negative one becomes a positive one. Because we always subtract them. We subtract them. Now, and when we do have to do one more run here. Look at this, and look at this. Hide all the other numbers. Hide this too. X times what equals X? Times a 1. Right? So it's X plus 1. Now you multiply that 1 to both these parts. What's 1 times X minus 1? X minus a 1. Better when I need you to subtract down here. Subtract down again. What's X minus X? 0X. Good, that's gone. But be careful. No, let's sit way down here, just a zero. Let's zero subtract negative one. Zero subtract negative one becomes a plus one. And they call that a remainder. But everyone, we did it. We did it. This is what we have. This is, they call this the remainder, but this is what we have now. It's all over. X squared over X minus one can be broken up into X plus one plus the remainder over the original, what was the original denominator? I put the remainder here, that's the remainder. Just so everyone knows, what did you do for that? This is called long division. Now, can I check to see if I get this right? You can probably check in your head. How could you add these together? That was the hard part, I went, you got it, look. Partial fractions with this x plus one, huh? You manipulated it. Next one. Oh no, but that's like the other problem we did today. 90% of the problem is just one. Yeah. It might even be in this case 95% because the integral of this is going to be easy. Yeah. But it might have been a while since you did long division. Now I want to see show of hands. Who knows synthetic division? You prefer that. You put it up. I only saw a few hands, so I won't show that today. But if you if you pretty like, I get that all the time in Calc too. You know, hey, professor, can I use synthetic division? And I said, of course. You're just trying to rewrite this as, you know, and break it up so we have that partial fraction. You can check this. Buddy. But what I just did, everyone, was called long division. And if you're like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna review that. Feel free to go to YouTube and just go long division. Click count, and you'll get like the one with the what. 2 million hits site, you can go on this one, which is pretty good. Hopefully they got a nice little uh, four-minute video there if you just need to review it. But that's really what's going on.